Okay, so continuing with our UI, we'll move on to the text input now. So if I scroll up, for now what I'm going to do is collapse this uh, view, the language container one. We're done with that for a little bit, just so I work on the style. Underneath there, I'll create another view, and this will be um, for the input container. So I'll say style equals styles dot input container. So I'll copy that name and scroll down to our styles. And if you want to, you can collapse all these. We're actually done with these. Um, so collapse those just to make it a little bit clearer. And I'll put input container like right there. And then in there, we're going to have a, um, where is it? Uh, we're going to have a text input. Make sure you import this from React Native, not any of these two. I, f I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but it's uh, quite subtle. And if I save it, you should see a text input. Uh, well, you can, in fact, no, you won't see it on an Android, on an iPhone device anyway, because it's basically invisible. But it's there. If you click around, you'll be able to see it. Um, but if I add a placeholder to that, uh, oops, I'll go into the line below like this, and I'll say placeholder, and I'll say enter text. If I save it now, you should see a placeholder there. So, so it's a bit more obvious that the text input is there. Um, we're going to make this a uh, multi-line text input. Just by adding the multi-line word, we don't add equals or anything like that, just the multi-line on its own. And what that means is we can now uh, press enter and go on the line below if we want to. Okay. Um, oh, I forgot to add some style. So style equals styles dot uh, text input. And I'll copy that now. Oops, I'll copy that name and go down to here and add the style block for that. And scroll back up. What I'll also do is um, say on uh, change text, and this is a function. Oops, equals. And now this uh, function will take a text parameter, so text. Uh, and for now, we can just console dot log uh, text, and you can see. Oh, so I've got the curly brackets wrong. I'm missing one at the end, uh, like that. You'll see if I enter now in the console, you'll see what I typed. Let me get rid of that. If I type now, you'll see it outputs everything that I'm typing. So that's just the uh, onChange text event. And I think that's actually it for now. So uh, underneath that, all we need to do is add um, a clickable element. So this will be a uh, like submit button. I'll show you what it looks like now. You'll see right there we have uh, a submit button. So again, this is a custom button element, so or a custom touchable element. So we're going to add the touchable opacity element like that. And then in there, we need an icon. Um, so if I go back to here, we actually need an arrow icon. So in there, I'll scroll down and find an icon that we want. Now, I want the, I know which arrow, I'm look, uh, which icon I'm looking for. Um, in fact, I know mine's eye icons, so I can filter it based on eye icons like that. And I know it's, uh, where is it, the forward arrow? This one here, arrow forward circle sharp, this one here. So I'll click on that. I'll copy the Ionicons import. I'll make sure to scroll up and add that. Um, in fact, I've already got this one, uh, so I can just add it to there. So Ionicons, like that. And then I can just copy the usage that way. And then I'll scroll down and just paste it in there. And now, if I save that, we're going to see um, a black button. Cool. So we'll come back and do the color on that shortly. Um, but for now, we'll add, we'll do the uh, style. And just to add the style here, we're going to say um, style equals styles uh, dot icon container. So I'll copy this and I'll scroll down and uh, add the block for that. Oops, like that. Okay, let's go ahead and add the style to the input container. So there's just going to be three items of style here. We're going to say flex direction is just going to be row, which should put them uh, side by side. And we're going to put the border on the bottom, just like we did up there with the um, language options. So if I scroll up to language container, I'll just copy those two lines like that. And in fact, you can see that these styles are actually identical. So you could refactor this if you want to, but I'm not too bothered about that. So let me save that. Cool, so we've got that border underneath. So what I'll do is scroll down to text input and we'll do some style there. So first we'll say flex one, which will make that text box take up all of the space it can, like that. We'll then say margin uh, top is going to be 10. Padding uh, horizontal is going to be 20. 
adding vertical is going to be 15. If I save that, you see it's added some padding on the top and the sides. We'll also specify our font family as regular, and then also letter spacing. It's the same value we've used elsewhere. We'll just say 0 0.3. If I save that, it'll be a very subtle difference. We'll then say, um, Height is going to be 90, so if I save that, you'll see it goes a bit larger now. And then finally, we want to set the color. So color is just going to be the text color. Now, what do we want to use for a text color? Well, we're going to use a black, of course, but not quite black. It's going to be kind of looking a slightly lighter than black. It's kind of the trendy thing to do these days. If you look at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or anything, anytime they're using black text, well, it's very rarely actually black. So what I'm going to do is go to colors.js. I'll add a new bit of style here, uh, sorry, a new color for um, text color. And I'll set the value of this to 202124. So I'll save that and I can go back to here and use it. So colors.textcolor. And I'll give it a save. Now, if, if I type in there, you'll see it's like not quite as dark as black, but uh, yeah, that's what we'll use for our text color in this app. Okay, I'll scroll down to the icon container. Um, and in here, we'll just say padding um, horizontal is going to be 10. And then justify content center. And then finally, uh, align items center. And that should center the icon. Cool. There we go. So let's fix the color on this. If I scroll up, um, we're going to set this to colors.primary. So we'll say colors primary and that should turn to that nice blue color we've been using but we want it to turn to a slightly lighter color if it's disabled now we can disable this um, this button by saying uh, disabled equals true for example but it hasn't done much for the color uh, it just makes it not clickable so we basically want to know whether this is disabled or not now how do we know whether it's disabled well we know we want to disable the submit button based on whether the text in this text box is empty. So we need to keep track on whether it's empty or not, essentially. So in the text input, we have this function which runs when we change the text, and we have access to the value that they entered. So all we need to do is store that. So if I scroll up to uh, the top here, I'll create a state variable for that. So this will be const entered text, oops, entered text, and then set entered text. This will be use uh, state. Okay, make sure we've got the import there as well. So we've got the uh, the state variable for the entered text. Let's just copy that set entered text, go down to here, and replace the console.log with set entered text. So now this um, entered text value, whatever's in the text box, can be accessed using this entered text variable. And because we know what's in the text box, we can just set the disabled, instead of to true, we can set it to um, enter text equals 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 an empty string. If it's equal to an empty string, there's nothing in the text box and we know it's disabled. So then we can use that on the, when we're setting the color and instead of just setting it like this, in fact, let me move this to the line below. It's, getting, it's going off the side of the screen um, and I'll do the same for the name and move that down a bit. So instead of just setting the color like that, I'll say um, enter text not equal equal to an empty string. If it if it's not equal to empty string, that means there's text in the text box, we're gonna change it to this color. If it is equal to an empty string, uh, it means it's gonna be disabled. So we need to set it to a disabled color. So in the colors, I'm gonna set a uh, primary disabled, just say bold. And this is just gonna be slightly lighter than this, just to uh, show that it's disabled. So the color is just gonna be 6FACFC. All right, I'll put my comma after that too. So we can use this primary disabled color now there. Now if we give it a save, you should see that when I type, is it working? Okay, oh, I've got the color wrong. It should be colors.primary disabled. Give that a save. And it should, when I type now, uh, is it going away? Yeah, okay, you can see that it's changing uh, to this color. If I type, it goes back to that. So yeah, pretty cool. Let me just scroll up. Uh, and I forgot to set this by default to an empty string. So if I go to the state variable, make sure you set the initial value to an empty string. That way, when it loads for the first time, it'll be disabled. So if, if I type, it uh, enables. Um, if there's nothing there, you'll see it's disabled. Cool.